Welcome to this episode of This Old DAW. On this episode, we'll be talking about DigiDesign's TurboSynth. But before we get into this, an introduction. So going back to the year 1985, DigiDesigns is growing, th um, th thriving small business that is becoming an increasingly significant player in the music industry. Um, growing from making EPROMs for um, certain samplers to designing the first uh, so sound designer, which was a sound editor for the Emulator 2. So in 1985, they came out with the program SoftSynth, which was the predecessor to TurboSynth. Um, I don't have a working copy of SoftSynth, so I can't really say what the difference is between TurboSynth and SoftSynth. But what we do have is we have TurboSynth 2.0. Um, this is a, I was very um, lucky to get a physical copy of this. It has this really nice manual, which is something I've been reading for the last couple weeks trying to get my head around this program. And it comes with these three floppy disks. Um, one is the um, sample files, a backup program, and the master program. So in this episode, we'll mostly be doing an exploration of the program. Um, I have a couple examples of things that I've learned so far. And at some point, I'm going to make a video manual of what all these modules do. And now we'll switch screens to show you what we're seeing on TurboSynth. To do a very basic and quick overview of what TurboSynth is capable of, a quick explanation of what we have here is this is the mixer module right here. If you can see my, my mouse pointer here. This is where you can mix up the 32 different sources in TurboSynth, which can be really handy when you're building complex patches. This is, of course, your playback button. That's how you hear your, um, what you're doing at this point. This is your oscillator module. This can be used either as an LFO source, or you can have variable waveforms within your oscillators, which is one of the cool features about this program. And I have patches that will demonstrate that better. And this is your sample module. This is where you can either directly sample in the TurboSynth or you can load Sound Designer 2 or AIF files into that, which is what we have here for our guitar part here. This is your noise source. This is um, also um, able to be used as like just a ping for white noise in TurboSynth. Um, your amp envelope, your filter envelope, and that filter, just so you know, is a six. Um, decibel per octave um, filter and if you want a 12, 18, 24 you just stack those in series and then that will give you a deeper slope. Um, not quite sure what that one is off the top of my head but this is your delay, um, time stretch, um, time compression, pitch up, down, and then you also can assign pitch to an envelope. This is a pitch envelope, the modulator, the resonator, which can also kind of give you that Akai time stretch kind of sound without having to um, pitch up or down. And this is one of the things that I'm, I can only do on my Quattro 700 with the Pro Tools 442 card, is the diffuser module. And that diffuser module is um, set to this part right here and so basically we have one guitar sound that's been processed in two different ways uh, mixed together through the mixer and then sent to the output is what we have here and last but not least the wave shaper this is one of the more well-known features of this program is um, this is one of the key ingredients to what made um, broken and the downward spiral from Nine Inch Nails sound the way it did I'm still learning exactly just how he built his patches in TurboSynth. So at some point, I'm still just doing my deep dive on this. So this is a very surface level overview of what we're able to do with this program. And so we'll um, start with the raw guitar riff that we're going to process. So it's a really nice and heavy um, um, key of C um, guitar riff here. 
And this wave saper is um, a lot to be tamed, so I'm going to bring that up to about 37% volume and listen to the difference that you hear here. <clears throat> and already you can kind of hear that um, digital wave shaping crunch that was um, a very key part of um, Trent Reznor's sound at this time. And um, I'm not sure if you really use a diffuser in any of his patches, but just to give it a quick demonstration, I will um, play this on its own, just so you can hear what this thing sounds like. So it's basically kind of like a, a digital reverb in a sense. I mean, that's basically the best way I can describe the way it sounds at this point. And then uh, we'll bring everything back together in the mixer. And then we'll just go back to guitar um, pre-processed and the wave shaper together. And there's so many different ways you can um, modify the wave shaper. Um, pull it up right here. I find that you get more of that um, signature crunch when you're messing with the um, minus zero to 100% range. That seems to be kind of like the magic spot in my experience with um, the wave shaper. Is once you get everything to that region, you're kind of taking the lowest part of the waves and you're just folding them back over. Is the best way I can kind of describe what you're doing with that sound. And so this is basically what it sounds like, um, completely like linear. So I'm gonna bring the volume down a bit on this part. Um, this is where it can get really um, wickedly nasty. There's just so many possibilities and ways you can just destroy these sounds. You can stack these, you can um, run multiple versions of them, but just for the simplicity of this demonstration, I'm just kind of keeping this where it's at. At some point, I'm gonna be doing deeper dives on um, just trying to get more accurate as to how Trent Reznor would have processed these sounds in this program. So to kind of shift away from the Trent Reznor sound here for a bit, um, there's a, many different ways you can use this program beyond just um, achieving the downward spiral guitars. Um, from the more synthesis end of the spectrum, um, I have this patch right here, which is basically um, the following here, where you have um, two oscillators, a noise source going into the modulator. So these have a modulation interplay. Goes into this mixer, which has a an amp envelope, filter envelope, and I also um, connected it to the um, pitch bend, basically, which um, goes from plus 12 to minus 12. So basically, um, a two octave sweep. That's what we have here. And so this is basically what that sounds like. And so this is a purely uh, synthesized turbo synth patch here. And so one of the cool things about the oscillator modules is you can go um, select all these waveforms. You even have um, user loadable waveforms here so you can um, basically, using this timeline here, you can kind of basically um, basically do a manual pulse width modulation um, with whatever waveform you want. So basically, it's just a, a waveform modulation um, timeline is the best way I can describe what this does. 
You can also like randomize the order if it wants to go this way, that way, or just randomly between all these. Your amp envelope basically looks like this. I wish there was a way you could kind of zoom in and out. Um, haven't quite figured out a way to do that necessarily. <clears throat> and play the sound one more time. And so basically the way this program works is everything that's basically rendered offline. Every time you make a change, it has to re-render the change. And so you need to basically watch the memory used, the memory free. Um, I have um, allocated quite a significant amount of RAM for this program, so we shouldn't be having any RAM issues with a machine with 6-8 megabytes, which was quite luxurious for the time. Not many people had that ability, so we're able to do some really big patches without much consequence. Close some of these patches to free up some memory. Um, we're not going to save those changes necessarily. <clears throat> And so one of the things that became interesting to me is um, just what are some of the things that we can do to... Um, before I get into that, I'm going to show one more synthesized um, sound here. I basically kind of used the same, same thing as before. I've bypassed the... Um, this bypasses the um, pitch envelope. And this is basically just a pulse width modulation base. So this program has a lot of utility. Say you only have a sampler in your setup and you want to have synthesis ability. This was one of those, that was kind of the original selling point of this software was to basically generate synthesized patches for your samplers. And of course there's so many, there's so much more you can do than just besides making basic synthesized patches in this program. So let's try it on an aim and break, just um, since Jungle is such a focus on my channel. Um, basically, right, right here we um, have a we have our break, which sounds like this. And then we also have a, a duplicate of that break running into this pitch envelope, which goes to a plus one minus one um, to kind of like generate like a phasing with the other break. And I believe we have it in a time stretch right now. Let's take off the time stretch for a second. This is what it sounds like without the time stretch. <clears throat> and now let's uh, reintroduce the time stretch, which was at 85%. Now, one of the things I haven't quite been able to figure out yet is um, finding a way to reliably do like 100 to 200 or 50% stretch on this program. It doesn't really give you uh, a clean way to kind of like dial in that exact amount of stretch. So it's a bit sloppy in some respects, but um, considering that this program is nearly 40 years old, it's still amazing what this program was capable of achieving. And that's where I just kind of discovered um, if you use the resonator instead of the time stretch, you kind of get a very similar sound to the um, time stretch. And here's what that sounds like. Now, it's not quite exactly the same as the, um, the Akai time stretch, but this at least you can kind of like dial into exactly where you want it to be um, as far as like the length of the sample. Um, you're not changing the beats per minute with this. So it's, it could kind of um, act as like an, a, a very um, old school Kaiser in a sense.
Here's another variation of that um, brake manipulation. In this one, we have um, the same brake going into um, different time stretches, different pitches, a wave shaper. Um, this was something I was experimenting with, but decided it wasn't going to stay in the patch. So an important part of the sound I forgot to mention too is um, we do have another pitch envelope um, added at the uh, mixer end where everything's combined together and just pitching it up all the way down. And we're not gonna save that. And then here's an example of this on a vocal sample, a time stretched. As you can clearly see at this point, this program has a lot of ability to fold, manipulate, destroy sounds, which is, I think is one of the coolest things about this program. And it does this in a very unique way that is I would say not very easy to replicate in more modern uh, workflows. The, um, just the method of how you take a sound and manipulate in this program is going to lead to the unique results that you get to get with this program versus say something where everything happens in a real time setting versus a non real time. So there's a little bit of like pre planning that you got to put into this. And I think that methodical workflow is what can lead you to some very satisfying results. Thanks again for tuning into this episode of This Old Daw. If this is something that you liked, feel free to like, subscribe, comment below, and share this with anyone that you might know who's interested in this topic. If there's any other material you would like me to cover, please also um, let us know. Um, and if you haven't already, um, we have a Discord channel where we can directly share these files, share progress and updates, and once again, just um, don't forget to join our Discord if you haven't already. And once again, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.